what I'm interested in is, is kind of coming out of this conference that you participated in on um, alternatives, alternative medicine. Um, and I know there's a tremendous amount of interest in Wyoming and around the country in alternative medicine. And let's start by figuring out what the heck that is. I mean, right. it seems to include everything from prayer to reflexology to herbal remedy. What, what do we mean, what should we mean when we say alternative medicine? Well, like you said, it really does encompass a broad range of uh, systems, of philosophies of, of medicine and treatments, as well as the individual products. So like you said, everything from herbals to aromatherapy to homeopathy, naturopathic medicine, et cetera. And, and um, it's really the, the gamut. And, and the term that uh, is typically used is complementary and alternative medicine, C-A-M, oh, okay. so CAM is the, is the acronym. And the distinction mm -hmm. is that if you use a particular CAM therapy, say herbals, with a prescription medication, uh, then it's considered complementary. Complementary, because right? it's and if, not an either or. Right, and if you use it just alone for that particular condition, then they consider it alternative. Alternative, okay, yeah. okay. Let's, let's focus on safety first. Are there, mm -hmm. um, there, there's such different practices, surely they must have different sort of risks and different concerns in terms of their safety and, 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 sure. uh, and, and, and how we would uh, test for, for wh whether something is, is harmful or not. So how do we go about yeah. assessing safety? <clears throat> sometimes it's anecdotal, um, and sometimes they have been able to do clinical trials where they are able to uh, compare a placebo with a given treatment. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then they're looking at effectiveness as well as, as side as, effects, as and, side effects and yeah, the risks. Um, in some cases too, the risks are just the money that you're expending. Because if something is, you know, something such as um, aromatherapy, probably not gonna hurt you in any way, uh, but you know, is it going to be effective? And, and they actually have shown some studies that aromatherapy can help with stress and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, but typically CAM is used uh, by people and paid for by people. Insurance companies don't pay for it. So some of the risk is financial. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Some of the real risks that I am concerned about is being in the school of pharmacy is with things that we ingest. So things like um, overuse of vitamins, um, certain herbal remedies that, mm -hmm. that if taken incorrectly, if taken in uh, higher amounts than intended, mixed with certain things. We have references that we can use, but there aren't always solid evidence studies right. to show us, you know, if you take this and this, what really will happen? And so there are a lot of gray areas, a lot of big questions. And, you know, my bottom line is um, make sure you tell your prescribers, you know, your physicians or your nurse practitioners what you're taking, even if it includes something that you don't think is very harmful, whether it's an herbal remedy, mm -hmm. if you're using a lot of vitamin supplementation, you know, let them know. Let's put you in the position of you're a recently minted pharmacist and I come up to you and say, you know, I've been having stomach aches and uh, Pepto-Bismol and I tried alka Yeah, I don't do anything. But a friend gave me this, this really good homeopathic, she said it's a really good homeopathic remedy. Mm -hmm. um, do you think it will work? Should I take it? Mm -hmm. What do you tell me? I mean, that's the kind of question I can imagine pharmacists sure. being asked. I can imagine that. And so, um, you know, that particular pharmacist may not know what kind of research has been done in that area, and Western medicine is typically very research-driven. We want to see the evidence, show us the, that evidence and proof that something works. Um, and so that particular individual may see most of the risk as being uh, financial if they were purchasing that. Mm -hmm. Now, if it was given as, a, you know, a friend gave it to them, they got it for free, um, because homeo homeopathic uh, remedies are extreme dilutions, and so you end up with very little um, product, I active guess, in a sense, active ingredient. ingredient. Sure, um, the chance of it being harmful is pretty slim, um, and so the question then would just be: Is it really going to work? Now, if it's a stomach ache, probably not real serious. If you're trying to treat cancer, that's another story. If you're trying to treat something really, um, you know, really serious, and and typically you do see more of the homeopathic remedies going. Uh, or being used by people for less serious. Mm -hmm. less so, but serious that's, that's another issue on the, on the risk side. I guess that's mm -hmm. where risk and uh, uh, safety and effectiveness come together right. is that if there's something really wrong with me and, uh, and an alternative mm -hmm. medicine, right. it, even if it doesn't cost anything, it could cost yeah. me an sort of an opportunity cost, right? Because I'm not mm -hmm. taking something that, that might have been tested. And, and so mm -hmm. is, is that, I mean, so you say, you know, uh, homeopathic remedies are often for these I mean, Less when benign. I have a stomach ache, it's not minor, but yeah, when others <laughs> right. have it, it's, yeah. it's usually pretty minor. Yeah. Um, so in those, so, so would you say that, that those are, are places in which the, the consumer might 
you know, maybe we shouldn't use the word, but experiment, try, extend uh, possibilities if they're dissatisfied with well, what they're getting through conventional? I'll tell, you, I'll tell you that consumers, you know, we as consumers, we do try things, we experiment, and, you know, those, the research supports the fact that, you know, we, our neighbor recommends it, we might be more willing to try it. Um, our, our sister had good luck with it, we'll try it. Or, or maybe for some people it's that it provides hope. Um, that, you know, I'm suffering from this particular um, symptom or side effect of something. And, you know, I might be, for example, with the, the example of cancer, you know, I may be going through the typical Western medicine treatment, you know, mm -hmm. chemotherapy, radiation. But for some of the symptoms, you know, I'm, I'm taking, you know, you may be taking varieties of CAM, and some of it may be working, some of it may be placebo effect, some of it is offering hope for you because, you know, you want to be able to function and do the things that you want to do. Um, so it's kind of a mixed bag. Well, thanks yeah. so much for, for visiting. And, and, yeah. and I guess maybe the way to finish it in a sense is mm -hmm. that if it's just placebo and I'm no longer in pain, then maybe uh -huh. I'm okay with it. Right. <laughs> Although I do want to stress that, you know, even things that appear to be um, na natural mm -hmm. may not always be safe. Oh, right. So that and is certainly, right. you know, something I want to make sure. Well, there's the old problem realize. with the uh, sun and skin cancer, isn't there? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's pretty natural. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thank you.